Uh, when I was on the Ontario Municipal Board, I, uh, I met and grew to like this goofy guy uh, called Neil Palmer. Neil's here tonight. And uh, I remember that um, one night uh, we were having a beer and he said in his goofy way, uh, so I met this chick in the dog park. And I'm like, fantastic, Neil. The idea that any woman would come near him was just unbelievable to me. So I'm very pleased tonight uh, to ask that chick, uh, who is now married to Neil, the poor woman, to speak to you on behalf of my friends, ladies and gentlemen, the immensely talented, funny Julie Donahue. the sophomore content of the evening. <laughs> and I have warned people with small children of such. Wait, I have to take a couple pictures from up here. It's great view. There we go. And I will kiss the next person to bring me a glass of red wine. Please and thank you so much. Take a picture. Okay, good. All right. I'm filming. I can't do it. <laughs> My husband can't do it. He's filming me. So I was really thrilled when Michael asked me to, uh, to speak tonight. I, I used to be a stand-up comedian, and uh, Michael was, was one of, always has been uh, one of my biggest fans. Uh, I was often accused of being a little bit blue in my humor, so I will tell you right now that that tells you what Michael's sense of humor is like, <laughs> because he liked me. So Michael told me I had five minutes to speak, and I thought to myself, five minutes, five minutes, why? Five minutes. Is it one minute for every decade that Michael has been on this planet? Or is it one minute for every foot of his height? <laughs> I feel very badly, Michael, that you will never get to shop at Mr. Big and Tall. <laughs> Instead, you get to shop at Mr. Short and Sexually Ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> it's not silky, but he'll do. <laughs> Michael told me this was a roast, and he said no hold barred. So everybody else has been pretty damn tame up till now. I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> for you. <laughs> you know, the first time Michael went to Jamaica, they were very, very confused. They, they thought he was a child from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> He's come a very long way. 
especially from his law, uh, law school early punk rock days. According to Mark Davis, Michael, what Michael thought was fashion, others did not. The common saying was that you dressed like a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Actually, Dinah, he may be eight years old when he talks about cars, but we all know when it comes to his taste in music, he's a 14-year-old girl. <laughs> oh my god! Mama, uh, oh! Oh, Michael! Michael, your friend, uh, Simon from Cambridge, wrote to me and said hello to you. He's sorry he couldn't be here tonight, but he wanted me to tell everyone about a little thing called the Unbanned. <laughs> Reaction on tape, everyone, right there. It was the 80s, you see, and as Simon tells it, Michael and I met at Oxford when we were both graduate students. We both had an unhealthy interest in all aspects of rock music, namely the drink, sex, drugs, and wearing lots of eyeliner. <laughs> so, the obvious thing would have been to set up a band. But that's time consuming as well as requiring irksome things like being able to play an instrument. <laughs> so Michael came up with the brilliant idea, form a band that cut out the music, <laughs> and go straight to the sex, drugs, and eyeliner. <laughs> Thus was born the Unbanned, which allowed us to wear our own branded t-shirts, attend parties as celebrities, and generally live the life fantastic. Seriously? Oh, seriously. Oh, man, dude. Dude. I don't know if everybody here knows that Michael and Diana are sci-fi fans, that they're both Trekkies. Trekkers? Trekkies? Yes. In fact, the first time they had sex, she played with his triples, he breached her hull, and it was over at warp speed. <laughs> if any of you have had the pleasure of being invited to Michael and Diana's for dinner, you know the routine. Uh, Diana cooks, she's a fabulous cook, and Michael chooses the wine to be paired with each course. Additionally, he usually serves cocktails when you arrive, and later on in the evening, he plays video jockey. Ra, ra, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> As each course arrives, Diana describes the food, and Michael describes the wine, which has been carefully picked to complement the dish. This is a lovely Chardonnay with an oaky. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and hits up, get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Michael and Diana are members of the Scarborough Golf Course. Yes, when they first applied to get in, they told Michael he wasn't white enough. <laughs> but then they met Diana, and they saw her golf, and they decided to make an exception. <laughs> she won the women's white thing for the club this year. Way to go, there. <laughs> girls weekend at my cottage in June and uh, it's been going on for about uh, I think we're up to 14 or 15 years now Diana, Diana would know I have a horrible memory but uh, and Diana attends and every year we get uh, really drunk and I can tell you that over the past 15 years I have learned some things about Michael that would shock a lot of you in this room <laughs> and I have to tell you that Michael you should really be very, very thankful that we took an oath at Girls Weekend that what happens at Girls Weekend stays at Girl, Girl at Girls Weekend and I'm not allowed to repeat anything that was said there on penalty of death. <laughs> death by tip bucking. <laughs> Live long and prosper, my friend. Thank you, everyone.